So now it's time to come back to that original question that we had. Which reaction is thermodynamically favorable? Which one's spontaneous? If we have solid copper and we were to put it in a solution of zinc, so say zinc chloride, would you get a reaction between solid copper and aqueous zinc where the copper is getting oxidized and the zinc is getting reduced? Or would you get a reaction if you were to put solid zinc into an aqueous copper solution where the zinc is the one getting oxidized and the copper is getting reduced? So you would go to your uh, chart of standard reduction potentials, find the uh, two reduction reactions involving copper and zinc. Now that copper plus two reacting with zinc solid, if we were to connect those two things with a line, those two, since the line's headed the right direction, northwest, southeast, that means that that combination of chemicals, aqueous copper, solid zinc, is the one that's going to produce the spontaneous reaction, the thermodynamically favorable reaction. So that means the one on the bottom is the one that happens spontaneously. You cannot get copper to react with a zinc solution spontaneously. You could force it, but it won't react on its own. The combination of chemicals that will react on its own are the solid zinc and aqueous copper. Let's look at these couple. Um, it's giving us a, a double-headed arrow there for both of these reactions. So uh, you're at equilibrium, right? So it wants to know which way is that reaction going to proceed spontaneously? What combination? Is it solid copper and aqueous silver that's spontaneous, that combination? Or is it the aqueous copper ions with elemental neutral silver? We want to look at that chart of reduction potentials. Uh, you can find there the silver is up near the top and the copper is uh, lower, to the, closer to the bottom. So we want to find a combination there of uh, silver and copper and which way makes that uh, northwest-southeast line. We're going to proceed to the right. That's the spontaneous direction. If you look at that little miniature version of reduction potential chart over there, the silver ion is in the upper left-hand corner and neutral copper is lower right. So if you could connect that Ag plus with just the neutral copper, you would get a line going in that northwest southeast direction. So the silver ion elemental copper combination, that combination is the one that happens spontaneously. And so that combination is our reactant side there. So it's going to be to the right. It'll proceed to the right. Copper and silver ions combined are the direction where that reaction is going to proceed to the right spontaneously. If we're looking at the iron and tin combination, the connection between iron and tin on that chart there, in order to get that northwest-southeast line, you would have to combine iron plus three with elemental neutral tin. That combination is on the product side of this reaction. So if we add together Fe plus three and elemental neutral tin, there's our spontaneous reaction and it's gonna proceed to the left. It'll make those other products. The correct combination of things is on the right-hand side. So those two things are going to react and go towards the left. Just a word of warning to you. Be careful. I've seen AP problems where they intentionally don't put the best oxidizing agent at the top 
and the best reducing agent on the bottom. Be sure that when you're doing this northwest southeast rule to decide the spontaneity of the reaction, make sure that the chart of numbers that they give you puts the most positive E cell value at the top and the most negative one at the bottom. If it isn't ordered this way, reorganize the data provided so you don't make a northwest-southeast mistake.